So we're back with another video which takes place in Texas, Dallas, Texas to be exact. But before we get into the video, please be sure to like the video and comment and subscribe and please let me know the stories that you want to see on this channel. Now back to the video. This story takes us to Dallas, Texas, which is known for its huge buildings such as the Bank of America Plaza and the Reunion Tower, as well as the Texas State Fair and is also home to the Dallas Cowboys. On March 7, 2023, Gary Green, who was 51, was executed at the State Penitentiary in Huntsville, Texas. The execution came nearly 14 years after Green took the lives of both his wife and stepdaughter in 2009 inside their Dallas home. Lavetta Armstead, his wife, was only 32 years old at the time and her daughter Jasmine Montgomery was six years old. The attack on the young mother and her child was sparked by a letter written to Green from Armstead where she expressed she needed to do what was best for her and she was annulling their marriage. In his own letter, Green blamed the victim, saying that Armstead and her children had a plot against him and they bought out the monster in him. And as a result, there would be five lives gone that day, including his own. Armstead was stabbed over a dozen times and he drowned his stepdaughter Jasmine in the bathtub. Green intended to kill her other two children, 9-year-old Jared and 12-year-old Jerome. Green stabbed Jared, but both boys survived. Jared told Green they were too little to die and they wouldn't tell anyone what he had done. Dallas police tell us Gary Green was waiting here at this house for his wife. She'd recently filed for divorce. Police say as soon as she walked into this house, she was attacked and then so were her kids. Yellow police tape surrounds Lavetta Armstead's one story brick home. On this day, her distraught sister comes by the house hoping there was a mistake. Wait a minute, what happened? I just got a phone call. The DISD substitute teacher had just gone home Monday night with her six-year-old daughter, Jasmine Montgomery. She had dropped off her two sons at church. Here at home, police say Gary Green stabbed her and then turned on his stepdaughter. She was a very kind lady and she did not deserve what happened. Green then went to church to pick up his nine and 12-year-old stepsons. Back at the house, he stabbed the younger boy in the stomach. His older brother was not hurt. The children were not Greens biologically. Neighbors say he was a devoted father. But you couldn't tell the difference. You couldn't tell if they were or were not. You know, he was a dad to them. He'd have them outside and the little girl would ride her bicycle and, you know, he'd be out with them. Afterwards, Green tried to commit suicide by overdosing on Tylenol and Benadryl. One month before this tragedy, Green was admitted into Timberlawn psychiatric hospital in Dallas, Texas, where he was misdiagnosed and discharged after four days. Unfortunately, Green had to abruptly stop taking the antipsychotic medication he was prescribed because he could not afford it. In 2018, his attorneys filed an appeal because they deemed him intellectually disabled and did not think his intent was to commit capital murder. Although Green had experts testify at his trial that he showed signs of schizoaffective disorder, this appeal was rejected by both the U.S. Supreme Court and Lower Appeals Court. The High Court has prohibited the death penalty for the intellectually disabled, but not for those with a serious mental illness. The U.S. Supreme Court in 2002 prohibited the execution of people with intellectual disabilities. Texas defined intellectual disability based on low IQ scores, with 70 being the standard. In an article titled, Intellectual Disability and the Death Penalty, which is posted on ACLU.org, people with intellectual disabilities are at a higher risk of wrongful convictions and death sentences. They may be more likely to falsely confess to a crime because they want to please the authorities that are investigating the crime. They are less able than others to work with their lawyers to help to prepare their defense. Because of the stigma attached to intellectual disabilities, people with these disabilities often become adept at hiding it even from their lawyer, not understanding the importance of the information to the outcome of the case. Green was also involved in a legal battle over the state's use of expired drugs used to carry out a death sentence. 
the Texas Department of Criminal Justice has extended the use by dates for lethal injections, which could potentially make the process more painful. Inmates feel this practice violates the U.S. Constitution's prohibition of cruel and unusual punishment. But I just have to ask, what about the cruel and unusual punishment these inmates cause their victims? Here were Green's last words before his execution. I apologize for all the harm I have caused you and your family. We ate together. We broke bread together. We laughed and cried together as a family. I'm sorry I failed you. There's nothing I can do. I'm not just saying that because I'm lying on this gurney. We were all one and I broke that bond right or wrong. I took not one but two people that we all loved and I had to live with that while I was here. I ask that you forgive me, not for me, but for y'all. I'm fixing to go home and y'all are going to be here. I want to make sure you don't suffer. You have to forgive me to heal and move on. Sorry, JT, I always loved you and I told you I will never say goodbye, but this is goodbye. There is nothing I can do to bring your mom and sister back. One thing about the men I used to be is that I never stopped loving y'all. See y'all on the other side. God bless you. I'm done. Warden. Gary Green was pronounced dead at 7.07 p.m. Tuesday, March 7th, 2023.